Remember back in episode 14 when we were talking about seven-year transitions? This is the final and third golden opportunity to affect your health long-term. In this week's episode, we are going to tackle the menopausal transition, what it is, what it doesn't have to be, and how you can live out your golden years with the most vitality possible. Hi, I'm Adrienne Irizarry. I'm an Eastern medicine practitioner who is passionate about women's health and helping women live their best lives. My goal is to put you in the driver's seat of your menstrual health, offering period solutions for a symptom-free life. Statements made in this program are for educational purposes only and not intended as a substitution for medical consultation or advice. We do not claim to diagnose, treat, or cure any diseases. This podcast is inclusive and welcomes all gender identities. The focus of the program is on biological function and we will use the term women throughout, but it is referencing physiological and social challenges for biology, not identity. Come as you are, I am happy you're here and welcome all performances of identity. I hope you find something helpful in this show. Welcome back to another episode of the Reproductive Rebel Podcast. So we have gone on this incredible journey through the seven-year cycles in a woman's life. We have talked about how to get started in a healthy way for young ladies, And now we have reached the end of our reproductive years and coming into second spring in menopause. Menopause is the third golden opportunity in a woman's life to hit a reset button on her health. So we're entering our water years in Eastern medicine as we go into menopause. So you are in your metal years during these chi transition years, so 35 and 42. So now we've come through the gifts and the invitations that we are extended during this time frame, and we are coming into our non-bleeding years. So in Chinese medicine, menopause is known as our second spring. Our kidney essence or kidney jing and our creative energy declines. So we no longer have extra chi to give new life. In Western terms, the ovaries decrease production of estrogen and begin to shrink. Menopause is official when you have reached one full year with no period. So when a woman is healthy, your menopausal symptoms should be mild. When we're seeing all of these memes and things like this out there about, okay, Gladys, lay down. We've got ice on one more step, poking fun at hot flashes being so strong that you can melt ice on the front steps. Those are signs of imbalance. Okay, anything that's an extreme in the body, extreme pain, extreme clots, extreme heat, anything to an extreme is a sign of an imbalance. It points to something going on in the system that isn't supporting you in the best way possible. So when you are going through that menopausal transition, that 12-month period where there are more and more spaces between your periods and the periods become less and less involved as that Chong Mai or sea of blood continues to dry up, you will still see possible mild hot flashes, some mild vaginal dryness. You will see changes in skin texture because we are losing some of our estrogen and that is our fluffing hormone. So our skin being fluffy and supple, that does change as we age. Um, Our eyes may begin to recede. But the thing to note about all of this is that no symptoms are severe. Nothing is severe. So all of these things that we make jokes about when we look at perimenopause and then menopause after that, all of those jokes are made about imbalances. So if you think about it, it's actually a really sad commentary on our culture and the lack of education in our culture around these stages in a woman's life. Because 
the Chinese medical system had such a beautiful way of looking at menopause coming into second spring. Just think about the way that's described. It's like starting anew. It's like new energy springing forth, new beginnings starting. That is a very healthy way of looking at this transition in a woman's life. And the thing that makes me really sad is our culture makes such an emphasis on youth and ignores the gifts that come with wisdom. And if you look at our societal values, women spend thousands of dollars a year or more trying to drink from the fountain of youth and preserve their youth and reduce the symptoms of aging and all of these things. And often at the detriment of bringing the body into right relationship. It's Botox. It's things that manipulate the body to decrease the presentation of a symptom instead of harmonizing the body to bring it into right relationship so that it expresses the healthiest version of itself. And I'm not demonizing anyone who has used any of those approaches for maintaining their youthful glow or any of these things. What I'm saying is that we are so focused on those symptoms instead of on caring for the roots of the plant and really meaningfully affecting our health, which will in turn affect our longevity. So menopausal symptoms, while they may be there, they are not severe. And in some cases, women don't really notice much of an experience with them at all when they are caring for themselves in a meaningful way. So just like menstrual abnormalities are normalized in our culture, so are menopausal symptoms. But you can have a relatively free, symptom-free, you can have a relatively symptom-free menopause, but this is achieved through herbs, through diet, through lifestyle, through stress management, all of the kinds of choices that create harmony and right relationship in your body. So thinking back to our episode on perimenopause, we were starting to talk about the invitation to bring more balance, to honor our boundaries, to support our body with the right foods and the right way of moving through the world. And when we answer that call, we are setting ourselves up for success for reducing symptoms in the menopausal transition. And the reason for that is you're not overdrafting the bank account. So if you think back to when we talked about seven-year cycles and we talked about the fact that there's some chi that you inherit from your parent and there's some chi that you can influence with your environment, diet, lifestyle, the way you move through the world, and that if you overspend the environmental account, you start dipping into what you inherited, you will age faster. It is totally possible to age gracefully when we support ourselves in meaningful ways. And those meaningful ways are making sure that we're supporting our diet with yin-supportive foods. We are honoring our need for rest when we need to rest. We are mindful of how we manage our stress. We are mindful of how we manage our schedules. We move in sync with our cycles. And then as those cycles start getting elongated because the sea of blood is drying up and you go for longer periods of time between periods and the periods are less involved every time you have one while you're on that perimenopausal road that leads to the menopausal road, the menopausal transition typically takes place over the course of a couple of years where you're getting longer gaps between periods and you have to go one full calendar year with no period. And then you've made your transition. 
if we are mindful of nourishing our bodies with the right things, not overstressing and overtaxing our system while it's in the process of doing a big process in our life, then we're going to come out the other side of it more vital, having more energy, really wanting to take life and run with it, which is beautiful because there's a lot of women that step through the menopausal transition and into postmenopause, and they want to go after the career that they put on hold. They want to change careers. They want to do something different with their life. They want to go out and be more social with friends. They want to go on girls trips. They want to see the top Mahal and they've always wanted to go. Like they start looking towards their outside world because they're no longer focused on home and hearth. And they now have the energy and resources to start focusing on the things that they want in their life. It truly is a second spring. You are bursting forth with a new life and a new way of moving through the world and new energy and new vitality. And it's a really beautiful thing if we choose to look at it that way. Because we live in a culture, I did a post about it not that long ago, about the fact that we spend so much time prioritizing maintaining a youthful physique when there are so many gifts that are given to us as we age. We find our voices. We find our sense of self. We find how to create meaningful boundaries and reach back out for relationships that I look at like my parents, for example, and my mom and dad were busy with us as kids when they when we were little. And then as my mom went through her menopausal transition, she started reaching out to friends that she hadn't spoken to since school and making a standing lunch date with one of her friends and things like that. Because before she was focused very much on home and hearth. And as we grew up and we left the nest and she was going through her energetic transition, she started prioritizing those relationships again. And that is a very normal thing to see happen. And in a lot of times, these relationships often will pick up where they left off (laughs) simply because we just had this blip in the middle where we had kids and we had to cart them to rugby and soccer and softball and science fairs and all that other stuff in the middle, right? So Menopause is our third golden opportunity to hit a reset button on our health. And that requires the wisdom of knowing when to say no, knowing when to prioritize yourself and say, I can't do this today. Maybe we can try tomorrow, but right now I don't have the energy in my body and I need to rest. Or noticing that you're starting to have a little more heat in your body and going, hey, I need to have a few more of these foods. And noticing that when you're nourishing yourself environmentally and through food in the right ways, that your experience with these symptoms decreases and in some cases goes away. This sets you up so beautifully for your water years and those years beyond menopause where you get to reclaim the things that you want in your life and have the energy to really embrace the things that bring you joy. But there's so much wisdom that comes with age and changing our narrative in our culture around older women really does need to be a priority because we want our young girls now as they age to have healthy relationships with their bodies to know how to care for their bodies when they reach some of these benchmarks so they don't have to suffer with the things that we did you do not have to suffer through your perimenopausal and menopausal transition you just don't and a lot of that comes from education knowing what it is that your body needs, how to take care of it, 
and what you can do about meaningfully affecting this transition. So a lot of us fear this transition because of all of the imbalances that it often will bring. But knowledge is power. The more that you know about the foods that you need, about the lifestyle that you need, it, this is all about balance. We are now seeing a body that can tolerate more raw foods and more cooling foods. You need to nourish your yin in order to keep the car from overheating. Okay, It's a very biomechanical explanation of why we get hot flashes, but essentially there isn't enough yin in the body to keep the car from overheating. And so we have deficient heat and it expresses itself through infections, hot flashes, moodiness, where you're really irritable very easily and things like this. Knowing how these emotional and physical symptoms begin to show up, you, with the right knowledge, can then start saying, okay, I have had a little too much alcohol, which has heat in it. It's a warming liquid. This is warming me up too much because now I'm starting to notice heat disturbing my sleep. Now I'm just going to pull back on this and see how it changes my sleep pattern. Nourishing the yin, nourishing the blood it will support a healthy sleep pattern. It will support a healthy transition and it'll help you feel stronger and more vital to embrace your golden years. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Reproductive Rebel. Reproductive Rebel is recorded by certified peristeam hydrotherapist, herbalist, sound healer, and Chinese nutritional therapist, Adrian Irizari of Moon Essence, LLC. If you are interested in setting up an appointment with Adrian for one-on-one -on -one support, ordering from our store, or checking out our course offerings, visit our website at moonessence.life. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter to get insider information on upcoming events and offerings. Join the conversation. Like us and follow Moon Essence Me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Your voices make this program possible. Thank you all for your continued support.